The Defense Department continues to increase spending on the Joint All-Domain Command and Control, or JADC2. But the bump in funding for that program comes with hurdles to making it actually joint and interoperable. Nick Sinai is former Deputy Chief Technology Officer at the White House. He's currently a Senior Advisor at Insight Partners. Nick, welcome to the program. Hey, Mimi. Great to see you again. What are the interoperability issues that JADC2 has, and how could things get worse in, in that respect? Well, let's just uh, set some context for your viewers here. Um, JADC2 is really this idea of being able to get data from one platform to another, so from one uh, satellite, from, from one plane. Um, and these are traditionally monolithic systems or really kind of big iron systems. And so how do you get those to the, the commander, the decision maker in real time? And you know, traditionally, uh, this has been kind of an afterthought and the Department of Defense is waking up and realizing that it really needs to uh, um, get this data to flow in near real time and real time uh, across services, because that's ultimately where the, the, the joint fight is. So is that happening now? Is, is JADC2 being created and implemented in a way that is fully joint and interoperable? Well, there's some promising uh, prospects. Uh, so, so MAVEN, which was the high profile project uh, program that General Shanahan started and now Colonel Kukor is, is running, um, and that has a, a number of commercial uh, software and AI vendors. And they've had some really uh, promising demonstrations at, at, at Northern Command uh, and with the Army Airborne Corps, um, but using other services as well. And so being able to demonstrate um, really that, that JADC2 concept. Uh, so that's that's been promising, but we still have a long ways to go in the department. Uh, we still have a lot of traditional defense primes um, who, who, you know, they aren't in the business of, of um, sharing their data and, and they're, they're thinking about software almost afterwards, right? And so the question is, how, how can the uh, Defense Department uh, make data flow better? Um, and one of the ways that they're going to do that is, is fund additional investments in JADC2. And so that's both at the service level, so you see a number of programs um, in the Air Force, ABMS, you see convergence and overmatch in the Army and Navy, um, but then you also see uh, JADC2 investments kind of cross services. And you see Deputy Secretary Hicks uh, with her data decrees uh, really looking to make data um, interoperable um, and, and making that a, a condition of, of new investments and, and, and also looking to extend Maven and Advana to the COCOMs. So you're seeing a lot of, of, of important investments. Uh, ultimately, the, the, the strength of, of de the Department of Defense AI and analytical capabilities is going to be based upon the, the, the quality of the data and the interoperability of the data. You know, Nick, I wanted to ask you about that because there are industry leaders, there are people calling for open standards and open architecture. Why isn't that already being done? Well, it, it absolutely needs, needs to be done. Uh, we recently invested in a company called Rebellion Defense, and that's one of their, their uh, animating principles is, is an open architecture. Um, and so it's, it's something that the Deputy Secretary of Defense is focused on, the Chief Data Officer, Dave Spurk, is, is, is focused on. And I think uh, we're seeing the, 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 the traditional defense primes recognize that this is the, the way the world is going. So we'll, we'll continue to see more um, uh, recognition that open APIs uh, and, and less kind of vertical integration is, is the, the path forward. But um, do you and, think that that introduces issues with intellectual property? In other words, who owns that? Well, I, I think that's actually the, the really important point. Thank you for, for raising that, in that um, we need to have more great commercial companies. And commercial companies own their own IP, right? So the DOD will own the data, it's, it's DOD's data, but the actual uh, uh, software that great commercial companies you know, will build, uh, they're, they're going to come in and provide that to the Department of Defense. And so we need great commercial software companies uh, and AI companies that are going to provide this kind of capability with open architectures, to your point. So who would be in charge of creating those data standards that would ensure that interoperability that's needed for JADC2? So we're not trying to retrofit it later. Yeah, so you know, ultimately, this is the the, the Joint Chiefs and, and the, the Chief Data Officer both have important roles in, in uh, fostering the, those, those open data standards. 
Um, so those would be the kind of the primary ones. And, um, but it also depends on the particular program um, because JADC2 is actually a number of different programs. Um, and so that's, that's the, the important thing is, is, you know, in these individual programs, uh, you know, are, are, are they uh, buying vertically integrated capability or are they really enforcing open architecture um, uh, as, as they uh, procure and, and continue to procure great software? Because that's the point is it's not just once and done. Um, you know, these things change over time. You know, you mentioned there's been increased investment in JADC2. Where do you think that money should go towards? What's the highest priority? I think the highest priority is, is um, capabilities that can be fielded today uh, because the, the real uh, uh, innovation here is going to be what operational commanders do in the field. Um, and so that's what we've seen with these recent exercises in Scarlet Dragon and, and Northern Command. And so you want to be able to take the, the kind of real-time sensing from satellites and other, and other sensors that we have uh, around the world, and you want to be able to use that, that kind of, uh, of data information in, in real time. Um, but you want the, the commanders to, to, to innovate on, on new ways to do things, because the, the adversary is not going to kind of fight you know, the war from, from 50 years ago. So you, you need that kind of innovation in the field. And the more that we can actually field capability uh, and continue to, to test it and try new things, um, not just the technology, but also kind of the way that they do their exercises, I think that that's where the magic is going to be. All right. Well, Nick, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us.